I found a group of Europeans there, mm -hmm. chatting, laughing, taking whiskey. Happy about it. Yeah, I in celebration. I was born at a place called Vetitore in Embu, and at this particular moment is in a location called Gaturi. Uh, at the time I was born, uh, there was no educated person who could um, talk of the birth date or the date of birth. But from oral, my oral, uh, research, it looks to have been between 1944 and 1942. Uh, mm. uh, I grew up at that place, I'm calling it Titori. I uh, went to school in 1951, and at that time, People are not, parents were not very interested in taking children to school. In actual fact, my parents had refused until the church, this was Kibogi, uh, Anglican, African Anglican Church, AAC. Uh, they are the ones who decided that I must go to school because I looked not just and grown up, but of and grown. Mm -hmm. And they wanted everybody educated around that area. Mm -hmm. And my parents had refused. Yeah. So they came one day and ransacked my father's home. Mm -hmm. And when my father came home and his wife told, <laughs> told him, we can't cook, mm -hmm. we can't do anything because all our pots, our anguans uh, have been taken by the church. Mm -hmm. And he furiously asked him, why? And he was told, because Maniki has not gone to school and the church won't see him there. Mm. So I went to school, really not because my parents had the will of taking me to school, but so as to rescue, the good. they are, <laughs> they are confiscated. Something interesting, mm. that there was a church called African Anglican. Yes, A.A. What was that? African Anglican Church, AAC, and that was the only one around my home. Mm. There was no Catholicism mm. or any other um, denomination. Mm. Then that is the current day Anglican Church, mm. or ACK. When I went, uh, that I said it was 1951. Yes. In 1953, both that school and the church were burned down. And that is when, when I started realizing there was a problem. So trying to find out, I was told it was burnt by a people called the Mau Mau. And the Mau Mau, at that time it was not clear to me who they were. But later I came to learn they were Africans just like ourselves, who were fighting the white man and saying the white man and all what he brought should go back to his home and we the Africans should retain our ent entity as Kenyans. As far as I was concerned it was Kenyans. I thought it was the whole of Kenya which was in that movement. It is much later I came to realize that actually even an area as close to us as Mbere, mm -hmm. uh, they are to our south, they were not very much interested in that movement, they didn't even know it, mm -hmm. and uh, the actions came to prove later mm -hmm. that really they were not apart. Mm -hmm. After they burned the school and the church, and the church yes. we had to move out 
and nobody guided us as to where to go. Because I loved education very much, and I loved school. And this time, let me also say, my father, after letting me go to school, had already, had already gone to work to a place called Kirikiri. That's what we used to hear, Kirikiri. That was Gilgil. So at the time the school was burned, my father was not anywhere. And my two mothers <laughs> did not know what to do. So it was me to look for where to get the next school. And I came to once Manyata. Uh, Manyata now was closer to um, what I might call a government. Because at that time we were not really aware of what, who the government was. It was, they knew, we lost new government because of Kigari AAC also. Because the, the Kipogi church that was burned and the school were children of the mother church in Nembu, Kigari. And Kigari is still there today. It's the place where there is one large church, the mother church of all the Anglicans in Embu, plus a teacher's training college, uh, which is still functioning, called Kigari. So coming towards Manyata, which was closer to Kigari, I was coming to what I might call civilization. Uh, and there, there there were schools. There was one called Kedangarire, at Kedangarire, I learned for a month or two. Uh, then it was threatened with burning like Kebogi. By the same people? By the same Mau Mau. And now I had known there was a people called Mau Mau. Then came 1954. Now I had to move from Kedangarire to Kianjokoma. Kianjokoma now had become a meeting place of people of Gaturi, my location, Gandori, and Kagari. Those three uh, locations each had a, a, an office or a home guard. Actually, it was a home guard. There were home guard stations at Kianjokoma. By implication, then there was better security there than Manyata, uh, I mean, this, this one's uh, I called Kedangariri or Okipogi, which had already been banned. The home guards were the Africans, men, there were no women, who had been convinced by the white man that the Mau Mau were not doing the right thing. They were enemies and they were bringing enemies of the white man, of course. Mm -hmm. And also, they were sort of destroying the civilization mm -hmm. the white man had already uh, brought. Mm -hmm. Now, when we went to Kianjokoma now, where there was better security, better security in the sense that the Mauma would not harass us mm -hmm. and they would not burn our school. And anyway, we did not have a school. Yeah. Uh, it is the schools of, I mean, or the students of the schools which, which were near Kianjokoma mm -hmm. that came together. Mm. That is, uh, I can remember, uh, Kavotere, not, not Kavotere, the, those who had been at Kebogi, those who had been at Kedangarire, mm. they were others at another place called um, Gitwara or Itongure. Um, and I think there was another one which was a part of Kagari. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the students of those three or four, it was not very clear, had taken refuge, so to speak, mm -hmm. at Kianjokoma. Now there was not school. Yes. So what we did, is we would look for an empty shop mm -hmm. uh, or a shop under construction whose owner 
and abandoned it because either they had been captured by the government and taken to detention or they had refused to complete it because they went to the to the bush as part of the Mau Mau force or now they were home guards and if they were in any of those they were not in a position of running a shop yes. so we would invent those empty shops mm -hmm. and then and of course classrooms. classrooms yes but in the long run somebody would come from nowhere and tell us you guys this is my shop can you move out mm -hmm. i want to utilize it now so we would be thrown out mm -hmm. and we would look for another one mm -hmm. When we were thrown out of three, four shops of that nature, we decided to build our own school. Mm -hmm. We decided to mow down a big forest of uh, water black trees, black water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we burnt down uh, the underground or the undergrowth so as to see the big trees. Mm -hmm and then we cut down those trees and prepared an area for building a school there. Mm -hmm. And actually, then our parents, especially women, because men were not, not anywhere. Mm -hmm. What but happened to the men? The men, I said, were either mm -hmm. home guns, forest gangsters, mm -hmm. they had joined the Mangua movement, mm -hmm. detainees, because there are men and now divided into those four groups mm -hmm. and they were not useful, mm -hmm. the women helped the teachers. Mm -hmm. And then we, the students, mm -hmm. we loved to learn. Mm -hmm. So each one would use the strength that they had, <laughs> whether she was a boy, I mean she was a girl or a boy. Mm -hmm. And we cut it down. I told you first to embant the undergrowth because it was quite thickly there. So as to, to chase the snakes and the other animals there. And also so as to clear the ground so that we could now see uh, the trees, the stems. Then the boys would come with axes and we would start cutting. Most of the work actually was done by the student. We built a school with four classrooms, four classrooms. And actually, that was now standards one, two, three, and four. That is what meant a, a primary school. Because the next stage, when you, you became a standard five, after doing common. Did you do common? Yes, I did common. When? Uh, 19. 54. Okay. Now, after <laughs> doing the common 1954, fortunately, I'm one of those who passed. Mm -hmm. And I even remember, we came to sit for the, uh, uh, for the examination at Kigari, because mm -hmm. there was no center at mm -hmm. Kianjokoma, mm -hmm. because the, the government did not know Kianjokoma. Yes. Yeah, that was an improvisation mm -hmm. <laughs> of uh, women and their sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So the center was Kegari. Okay. And that is the first day I passed uh, Manyata mm -hmm. so as to come to Kegari. Mm -hmm. Because in Standard 4, mm -hmm. uh, everybody looked at me mm -hmm. as their leader. Mm -hmm. And actually, let me say in the whole school. Yeah. Because what I did say is, as we struggled, our teachers were thinned slowly by slowly by the government, being taken as detainees or as home guards. And um, then you would find the teachers were just becoming fewer and fewer. And by 1954, we had only one teacher in that school. A man called, um, uh, what is his name, I'm forgetting. Um, 
Yeah, and funny enough, he's still alive. We used to call him Mr. Kiora. Kiora Wagashoko, I, now I can't even remember. <laughs> Kiora Kashoko is the only one who was left. All the other teachers disappeared. In those other holes that I showed you. Then when he was left alone, <laughs> he told us, I'm not going to be killed in Igaturi over issues I don't understand. I am going back to my home. And he cycled away. But fortunately, before the last, last but one teacher was uh, whisked away from detention, we happened to have been coming from lunch together. I was here yeah, with the teacher. I was walking behind him. He was called Njamurik Ndwega. Njamurik was the last teacher who handed the school keys and we were coming to get together from lunch when he noticed some guys coming and he, decided, he realized that those were after him. I did not have any idea that they were after him. So he took out the keys he had. He is the only one who had the keys of the school from his coat pocket and he threw them uh, like a tennis ball over his shoulder, because he could not have turned. For if he turned, he would have been shot, shot dead. But sensing trouble, he decided not to go <laughs> or the keys. with the keys. So he threw the keys to me. And I grabbed them from the air, like you grab a tennis ball, um, or rather a ten quite, sorry, not a tennis ball, a ten quite. And I handed the Ascaris, ask, this time, I was already a kilometer or more away. Because when, when I grabbed the keys, I simply turned and disappeared. And we, we, we had learned to run. We had learned to, when you are running, you don't run in a straight line. You run in a zigzag fashion. So they tried to aim at me. He could not catch me. Okay. And, and it, several bullets were, I couldn't hear them. Okay. They, were, aiming at you. they were aiming at me. So now, uh, the teachers, I can't tell whether they had either taken the oaths or been recruited into the Mau Mau movement. It was very secretly being done. There was even a plane that used to fly over here. We used to call it Wanguto, uh, um, the backbiter. It would fly across here and it was telling people, like women, you women of Embu, don't be is cheated and then it would talk of how the Mau Mau were bad people, were primitive, were bloodthirsty characters and that we should not let them rule us or throw out the white because they were going to drive us back into Primitivity, yes. And that is what the aeroplane was telling us. It would fly at quite low. And I'm um, sure the fellows who were broadcasting that and quite loud, uh, loud speakers. So we were hearing. Remember, the Maumau Mau were very interesting people. Even in the bush, they would hide their identity. That is where you hear. There are very few people I know by names, and I, although I was a Mau Mau, simply because they would, not, they would hide their identity. Because for instance, the chief Mau Mau in Embu, uh, I came to learn later, he was um, uh, called Nyaga, or Karuerua. But all through his fighting time, he called himself Kubu Kubu. Sasa ukisikia kubu kubu, what is 
kubu kubu. It's just those big footsteps that has. Uh, I took my first oath in 1953, just before the, uh, my school was burned, and I was coming from school. The second oath, which we took in '54, or I took in '54, mm -hmm. just before now, where the, the, the villages, or rather, yeah, our tribe of villages were dismantled, mm -hmm. and then. In his tent, we were taken to what we called Ndaki, mm. which the Kikuyu call Ishagi, mm. and uh, the Meru call, um, no, it's India who call them Iberi. Mm -hmm. Now, in the villages, mm. how was life? In the villages, mm. life was just, to use one word, terrible. They are unhygienic. Any, any and a hygienic way of living. Because even many as the people are, especially after we just settled in the villages, they were not even pollution blocks, Havana. So you <coughs> stayed in your uh, condition of wanting to help yourself until Darkness came. Mm. That is when you would move out with a panga, mm. dig a hole, and help yourself there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in these villages, hunger was a big, big problem. Mm. Because even if you had food, mm. like now you moved from a compound like this, where you can see the bananas, and you are taken to the village you would not be allowed to come from the village and come and pick your bananas. Mm. No, you would have to be gated in until mm. the sub-chief or the Mzungu mm. who would be uh, in charge of that post mm. would give the home guard permission to escort you to go to your chamber mm. and get food. And you will not get foods like yams or um, uh, cassava, because mm. those ones take time yes. to, to dig. Yeah. You would go and the fellow would look at his watch mm. and tell you, uh, 30 minutes. Mm. And you know, you are not all having your mashamba near there. Mm. Some are far. But if after that, those 30 minutes, once the wheel was blown, you had to run. Because if you find they have closed the gate that encloses the, the village, they would not, you not be around to. And when they, they would become a bit crazy, they would move out and say they are going to, to search Mau Mau. You'll be the first Mau Mau to be shot. Okay. Our life that time, my friends, was very, very cheap. Mm. It's just like when you are driving along the road, mm. and I know you are a big driver, if you knock down a dog, mm. do you stand? Yeah. No, but if you knock down a sheep mm. <laughs> or a goat, <laughs> the traffic says you must do what? Mm. You must wait until police come. Mm. Yeah. But we were like dogs at that time. Yeah. So when did you become a Mau Mau yourself? The very first oath. Mm. That made you a Mau Mau? It made me a Mau Mau. Did you realize mm. it at the time? I did because if I met with an Askari, mm -hmm. I knew this is an enemy. Mm -hmm. And several times um, we met with them. The way now they were trying to shoot me mm -hmm. when I did what? Zigzag. I zigzagged. Secondly, uh, on my way to, especially from Kiajokoma now, to Kamama, mm -hmm. that was quite a long distance. Yes. And I would, we would pass through bushes, mm -hmm. uh, zigzagging. Mm -hmm. At times, we would be worried mm -hmm. by the Mau Mau themselves. Mm -hmm. And they would 
uh, demand to know whether we had taken the oath. One yeah, one of them would, would actually block our route and then demand to know. You had to prove that you are a Mau Mau. Then they would ask you for a book, exercise book. Uh, for what? Kusokota Kraiko. The, these guys, because of the cold of the bushes, they survived on Kiraiku, uh, this road to Mbako, yes. road down. So, uh, because you are one of them, you would definitely give them the exercise book. Now you will be in trouble with your teacher when you go to school, because you are given the book for, <laughs> for, for your notes. Now you don't have the book. You donated the book. Yeah, you donated. And you could never see what happened. You would rather cheat, it got burned, eh? <laughs> rather than that you donated it. My job as a mama was um, guarding when oaths would be being taken in, in a place like here. Uh, since I was also a boy and a small one, I would be having these wooden wheels we make mm -hmm. as children, mm -hmm. and I would be driving it mm -hmm. from where the oath is taking place mm -hmm. to a place like two, three kilometers, Motondole there, mm -hmm. and coming back. Mm -hmm. When you think I'm cycling mm -hmm. that thing, I'm not cycling, I'm, I'm watching, I'm gathering information. Who is there? And if I saw something suspicious, mm -hmm. I would bypass mm -hmm. and then turn back. Mm -hmm. And now come at a faster speed mm -hmm. than... There's, there's trouble there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I come and whistle mm -hmm. or just a signal mm -hmm. the, the guy. Because at this time now, if we were, the oath was being taken here, by the gate there would be somebody. Mm -hmm. So I would start signaling from the road where you saw. Okay. And he would tell these fellows, eh, so and so says, even if he doesn't so and say so and so, it is like a, a past. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He would say, there is trouble. And I tell you, in 10 minutes, that place would have been so cleared. And the, the um, all the takers, mm -hmm. and even those who are being given, mm -hmm. they would not go out the way they were told to trap is. They would go the opposite way. So you so, are work was as an intelligence boy? Yeah. Or scouting? Correct. Okay. I was a scout. Mm -hmm. you were what were you discussing as Mau Mau youth? As Mau Mau youth, mm -hmm. we were discussing how to entrench Umau Mau. In other words, protect the, the men and the women we knew were in the bush. Mm -hmm. um, because we knew they were there for our, for our good, for our future. We would, at times, uh, scout and see or hear those who are talking against Mau Mau. Then, in the evening, when we went back, we would tell uh, the fellows who were next to us that Munene is a terrible uh, guy, or he, he is a betrayer. We, and you would be asked for proof. You prove what you heard him say, where you saw him, what he was doing, you see. And then that very evening, <laughs> you get <laughs> tough visitors who are no nonsense characters and they don't want any proof about so with the, when we took the oath and especially those two uh, we saw and we actually practiced the swearing that we will never uh, betray them or betray one another and that if we, we saw a white man and we had a chance, our work was to kill that person, mm -hmm. not to maim. Kill the white man? Kill 
Marisa. Did you hear of people like Kemadi, China? Yes. Kaimunge, Mwariyama? Yes. General China, Mwariyama, uh, Kemadi, Kubu Kubu, the one I see, that one, that one I, I'm both hand, and later saw, but unfortunately I saw him when he was dead. Kubu Kubu? Yes. In what context? He, <laughs> he was, First of all, dead, mm -hmm. and then he was being burnt mm -hmm. like a piece of yam yeah. or a banana. And you were called to go and see him? I was not called. Yeah. I was coming from Kamama. So we were going home mm -hmm. from Kamama. And where we were bypassing, mm -hmm. unfortunately, on the left side of that place, is where Kubu Kubu was being burned. Mm -hmm. So remember there were no uh, phones mm -hmm. or for that matter even uh, Tomeme, mm -hmm. Tomeme radios. Mm -hmm. So to hear any information, you had either to hear from mm -hmm. uh, what people are talking mm -hmm. or see mm -hmm. with your eyes. Mm -hmm. So. We left school without knowing that Kubu Kubu had been killed. He was uh, not just ambushed, because he was also notorious, and he feared nobody. That's why he was called Kubu Kubu. Because when you are um, hiding, you don't walk with heavy steps. Otherwise, you are betraying yourself to cover murder. But yeah, he was so brave that he went boo, 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 saying, who, who wants me? Who, dare, can you dare? <laughs> he was a very brave man. So he was daring them? He was daring, and actually I'm told, even in the cave, because he was tracked up to a cave in which he was hiding, he really um, killed several soldiers, mm -hmm and they and the others. Mm. But at the end, he was overpowered. Okay. Then, once he was overpowered, mm. I was told he was tied at the back of the Land Rover mm -hmm. with the head in the Land Rover, the legs and the rest of the body mm. on the ground. Mm. So, in a way, you can say he was dragged. And, and he was taken in several uh, villages so that the people could see him and witness that he was no longer. He was dead, dear. Okay. And that he now had no value. That is, what, that is why he was dragged. Until now the last village was Kianjokoma. Now darkness was drawing. So they said now they should finish him and not embury. Mm -hmm. I'm told it is like they thought if they embodied him, mm -hmm. he would resurrect. Mm -hmm. So he had to be burned and to be, and to be seen he was ashes. Mm -hmm. Again, I've, I found a group of Europeans there, mm -hmm. chatting, laughing, taking whiskey. Happy about it. Yeah, in celebration. In Nanjua Sasa, we were not to talk, we just bypassed. Mm -hmm. But, and that was the first person I saw mm -hmm. being burned. These days, it has become common. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from Kubu Kubu, now, about uh, Kemadi was very famous. Mm -hmm. We could hear of Kemadi here. Did you ever see him? I never saw him. He was a very brave mm -hmm. man that he would go to uh, government, uh, government uh, establishment mm -hmm. and sometimes he would even take uh, beer or tea mm -hmm. with them. And before they discovered it, it was <laughs> Kimadi. And on his way back, uh, that's when he would tell him, he would tell them he was Kimadi. And then they would either jump up or someone would start urinating on themselves. Come on, we used to urinate on the skier. Kumbe, 
We just escaped him by a whisker. Uh, things like those. I would hear of um, General. Here in Embu, we had a Cairo Musavu. General Cairo Musavu? Yeah. In what context? In the context that he was a very brave warrior. Mm -hmm. He would attack uh, government stations mm -hmm. as a leader, you know. Uh, and uh, often he would go and capture weapons. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Cairo, I, I saw, you finally. See? Yeah, but long after Mau Mau. Actually, he built a home just next to where you have come through, Akwegori. Mm -hmm. That is where the, okay. the Pharaoh lived. Okay. But this mm. general whom you came to know, mm. Mm. how many battles did he win? He, uh, he never, we never came to that. I, actually, I tried to interview him. Mm. But funny enough, he was very secretive. Uh, even you hear they were generous. Mm. When they realize a person like you is asking them questions, mm. <laughs> they were very selective in what they would tell you. Mm. And at times, at times they would ple plead ignorance. Mm. So you needed to visit and revisit and revisit, mm. which whose time I did not have. Okay. But because they always saw themselves being betrayed. Mm. She had to record an general Modoni, a woman. But I never saw her. The king, the name was known everywhere. And I, I also uh, had it. Yeah. And um, there was a general Kasam. Kasam. Dio. Kasam Hapa Kirinyaka. Yes. Now, uh, I also had the hand of him. And later I saw him. Kasam uh, Jogu. Later, I saw him having one amputated leg. Mm. Yeah, but he is now dead. These mm -hmm. people called Johnny's. Mm. Who are they? Johnny's? Mm -hmm. Very much. Mm. And they almost killed me. How? Oh. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Twice, mm. we were coming from Kamama, mm -hmm. and I told you the route you were going, yes. uh, which made us. Go to the barrio, not barrio, Mbani place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called crematorium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the the... Uh, although we had not mm -hmm. had that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we one day mm -hmm. came from school, mm -hmm. and the seven of us mm -hmm. went by passing. Mm -hmm. Then we found the Joni. Mm -hmm. Joni mm -hmm. were a new set of soldiers. Mm -hmm. the, British and brought. Mm -hmm. The normal soldiers that we knew mm -hmm. were normally Africans, mm -hmm. and like uh, Askarikanga, mm -hmm. uh, the ones we are calling APs mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. We knew of Kenya Army, okay. KER, -K yeah, KER. Those ones we knew. But during the Mahuma, mm -hmm. when they realized they were not willing, a new set of uh, soldiers were brought. Mm. Those were more boys, actually, than, <laughs> than soldiers, because we had been used to this fat, uh, fattened uh, kanga mm. or uh, kaya. How are you taught to the the way I saw? And they were very swift mm. in running. They were very obedient mm -hmm. in obeying orders. Mm -hmm. I think they were called full serious. Mm -hmm. Full serious. Yes, full serious. But we called them Johnny mm -hmm. because that is the name they were using. Mm -hmm. So one day, as we were coming from school, mm -hmm. we found them beyond Kairuri. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were just on the road. You would look and see them and see as if they were not serious. Mm -hmm. They were not really serious soldiers. Uh, then, as we were passing, mm -hmm. they stopped us. Mm -hmm. And they told us, mm -hmm. you, Mau Mau, mm -hmm. today 
you are dying. We were lined up. And actually, they decided to shoot. See, they were called to order by their boss. And then I hand him. <laughs> and I knew the next one will be shoot. So, after the first, uh, I mean, um, uh, aim, I would tell the fellows, Jirogi dere medo. The gun or the bullet does not have eyes. And I think trouble, my friend teaches people to do. We had not practiced at all. Nakusema hiyo, tuliere anwa. So when the, the Fusilias were told to shoot, every one of us fell down. <laughs> and did not fall down and did stay there. Fall, Somerset, zigzag, going to the bush on bananas. The first time we went to, to a banana <laughs> a graph. And we, as we were zigzagging, you know, we were proceeding towards our home. So you just hand bananas, just saying, shoo, 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 shoo. Mm. What is that? Mm. Bullet. The bullets. Uh, uh, the fools were shooting us, even after we, we did what? Mm. I came to learn later mm. that they had been taught mm. every black man in Kenya mm. is a mau mau. But you know, yeah, shoot. Mm. You, the job was to shoot. But you know, that one, first of all, was wrong because it was not in Kenya. It was in central Kenya. But since they were not going anywhere else in Kenya, it happened to in Jua. And the second time, we met them at the same place, and that was also done. But thank God, they never caught even one of us. So I know the food series, and I had that experience. Okay. Mm. They almost killed you twice. Yes. Oh.